I know what you're thinking. C-spine x-rays are so complicated. Here's a quick overview of the basics and some common pathologies too. In South Africa, cervical spine injuries are incredibly common. Cervical spine injuries are important as they can result in death or lifelong neurological defects if not treated properly. Who should have C-spine imaging? High energy trauma or low energy trauma with any of these features. A CT scan or MRI may be warranted in these patients, especially if there are unclear X-ray findings or limited clinical examination. The clinical picture should always be considered in the context of a C-spine X-ray. Remember, it's all about being a safe doctor. Interpreting a C-spine X-ray is as easy as an orthopod's workout. <laughs> There are three views of the cervical spine. Lateral view. AP view. Odontoid peg view. To interpret the cervical x-ray, you should use a systematic approach. Make sure you assess all the visible structures. Use the ABCDE's approach. A. Adequate coverage. A. Alignment. B. Bodies. C. Cortical outlines. D. Disc spacing. E. Edges and soft tissue. The following rules apply to the interpretation and presentation of all x-rays. Always confirm the patient's identity and date of birth. Then identify the type of x-ray and the specific view that you are looking at. Be sure to orientate yourself. There will usually be a small metal marker indicating either the right or left of the x-ray. Adequate coverage. Ensure that all vertebra from the skull till T1 are visible. If T1 is absent, a swimmer's view should be requested. Alignment. The anterior line is formed by the anterior longitudinal ligament. Draw this by joining the anterior portion of the vertebral bodies, and this should form a smooth, continuous curve anteriorly. The posterior line is formed by the posterior longitudinal ligament, and is drawn joining the posterior borders of each vertebral body. The spinal lamina line is formed by the anterior edges of the spinous processes, and is particularly important for subluxation of the vertebra. The cervical cord lies between the posterior line and the spinal lamina line. Check that all vertebral bodies are approximately the same height. Shortening of a body may indicate a compression fracture. C1 does not have a body. Check that all bodies correspond to a spinous process. Cortical outlines. Trace out the cortices of all bones looking for fractures. Cortical outlines. At the level of C2, look for the cortical ring, which are the lateral masses viewed from the side. If a step in the ring is visualized, it is indicative of an odontoid peg fracture. Disc spaces. The spaces between the vertebral bodies are representative of the disc spaces. They should be more or less equal in height. Soft tissues. Use the 373 rule. First identify the C3 body. From C1 till the edge of C3, the soft tissue should not be greater than 7mm in width. From C3 onwards, the soft tissues should not be more than 3cm in width. An increase in soft tissue width could signify a hematoma due to a fracture that may not be visible on the x-ray. Edges. Be thorough and look at all other visible structures. Cranium. Mandible. Trachea. And now we'll look at the AP view. Remember to follow your ABCDEs. Adequate coverage. You should be able to see most of the cervical spine. C1 and C2 might be difficult to see. An odontoid view will help you. Alignment. Ensure that the lateral edges of the C-spine form continuous parallel lines. Bodies. Outline the vertebral bodies. Cortical outlines. Outline the cortices of bone. 
but remember that it is more difficult to see a fracture in this view. Disc spacing. The spinous processes should be spaced out evenly and form a straight line. The disc spaces should be evenly spaced apart and be of approximately equal height. Edges and soft tissues. Check for surgical emphysema, the lung apices, and for any rib fractures. A dontoid peg for you. Adequacy. You should be able to see C1 and C2 adequately. Alignment. The lateral processes should be aligned in the same plane. The spaces between the lateral masses of C1 and the odontoid peg should be equal. Bodies. You can see the body of C2 clearly. Cortical outline. Outline C2 and be sure to look for fractures around the odontoid process. Edges and soft tissue. Look for any fractures visible in the mandible. Now time for a quiz. Use the ABCDE's approach to interpret the x-rays and note any pathology that you find. You should pause the video to analyze the image.